Welcome to CGH Podcast. Guess what day it is? Hump day. I've been on, uh, been working out every day for over 90 days now. Uh, I'll do cardio on Monday, Tuesday's yoga, Wednesday is hump day. Thursday's yoga, and Friday's also cardio. Uh, on Fridays, I usually do high-intensity cardio, cardio, so I'm usually running the hills or weighted. But today, we're rucking. I got a big old case of water back there. So you might hear it sloshing around, plus my camelback. I got about 60 pounds in there. Uh, we're going to try to do at least three miles, and I figured... Hell, we'd take you along. Not much has been going on in Cook's World. You guys got to see the uh, podcast with uh, my brother up there at uh, the hunting camp. It was a great place. Uh, I'm really glad those guys invited me up. It was a beautiful country. Up in uh, Murder, Inc.'s neck of the woods. Uh, Pennsylvania uh, it's a huge farm up there he's got about 300 acres did some farm work while we were up there baled hay I haven't baled hay since shit I think I stopped baling hay when I was when I could drive maybe 16 I think 16 17 is the last time I started baling hay but I miss it. I still got it. <laughs> I got to, uh, first time my brother's ever bailed hay. And he got to bail with me, so I was filling him in on how shit works. I know I haven't been on, haven't been doing much videos lately. I haven't really had a time. Plus, I've been really focuses on PT. Bow season's coming up here. In September and I'm super looking forward to that and I've been getting in shape one my main goal in life right now is I want to go on an elk hunt on public land with my bow so every day I've been out shooting at least five arrows a day at least uh, I'm getting good I'm getting a lot better and I've been working on of course getting in shape uh, you always see a lot of these you always see a lot of these channels these outdoorsmen and all kinds of shit like that listen if you're 300 pounds if you're 300 pounds and you're telling and you're saying oh I'm an outdoorsman come on man like you're gonna wear out in a mile. That shit, st stop lying. Stop lying to people, stop lying to yourself. You know, I know when I get out here, when I get on this elk hunt, it's gonna be tough. It's gonna be real tough. And I'm training for the hardest elk hunt of my life. That way, if it becomes the hardest elk hunt of my life. I'll be prepared for it. If it turns out to be super easy, great. I think that's awesome. Just means, just means I had a good hunt. I've talked, I've talked to my brother about this before. If I go out on an elk hunt, I step out of the truck, and there's an arc, and there's an or an arc, an elk, uh, forty yards from the truck and I can fill my tags, I'll do it. And then I'll just camp for the rest of the time and eat elk meat. I'm all, I'm all for it. All I know is shit's gonna get hard. I know, I've researched and it looks like the back hams of an elk is an average of 90 pounds. That's bone in though. I don't know how much it weighs bone out. I've definitely bone out my, bone out my meat after I hang it. 
But if I'm gonna if I'm gonna pack it out, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and debone it. Of course, I've never done it before, so we'll have to see what happens. I'm lucky enough that uh, with this working out thing, that my little development I have here is uh if I do this route it's one full mile including the driveway so we're gonna try to get around this bitch about three times right now we're on a hell of a hill and I can't, I can't turn the camera around but you've seen this hill before for sure that's the one I was sprinting up with my interceptor vest It's pretty brutal when you have 60 pounds on it. Usually what I do, there's a road right outside my development that just makes a big loop of back roads. I've been doing that. It's brutal. It's brutal. It's uh, mostly uphill the entire time. So I know when you get, to, when you start on the hill going on up there, it's like just don't stop just don't stop and when you get to the top you take a right and it gets a lot steeper for about 15 20 feet if that 15 20 feet when you're at the top of a uh, after you've walked this long ass hill oh it sucks it's the hardest it's the hardest ever but you not gonna Ain't nobody gonna be there to help me. I know I would love to go. I'd love to go as a team. I'd like to have a couple guys with me. It's just easier on a team mentality. But I'm training to be solo. Which sucks. Definitely sucks. It's uh it's hard to Keep motivated, dedicated when you're by yourself. But what I'm doing, my mentality is don't rely on motivation, cultivate self discipline. Self discipline will never fail you, ever. If if self-discipline ever failed you, you just failed, I believe. Just means you didn't cultivate enough. So, I'm out here running by myself. I do do yoga with my buddy, Jameson. Uh, he's been, we actually stepped it up to start doing it on Saturdays as well. So we got Tuesday, Thursdays, and Saturdays. I'm get run over by a car. golf course we've been doing it Tuesday Thursdays and Saturdays and it's been it's been great uh, I'm very inflexible I'm just now getting to be able to stand up and touch my toes uh, it's ridiculous Sets, me, sets myself up for injuries. So, I saw a weakness in my game and decided to fix it. But it all goes back to cultivating self-discipline. I got... I have to get up. I've been thinking, I've been doing a lot of thinking about if Every time that that thought pops into my head about oh, I don't want to do this or I don't want to do that the moment it pops in my head that's when I do it if I set my food plate down or something while I'm watching TV or anything like that and I go oh, I'll get it later I just go ahead and get it right there just just because I had that thought it's been keeping me it's been keeping me on pace 
to making improvements. One, improvements in my life. One, improvements physically. And again, just cultivating self-discipline. I have a lot of problems with seeing that people just won't, they just won't take the first step. They won't take the first step to just start fixing what they know is wrong. Here comes golf cart. <laughs> you guys are going on YouTube. <laughs> I, just, I just see people that need to fix things in their life and they just won't go ahead and do it. Rather, rather complain about it or bitch about it or deal with it over and over and over again and then complain about it. It gets, it gets old. And of course, I know everybody's life's different. And I know everybody has different mentalities. That's just my thought on it. It's just my opinion. I see my... The only way I can, I guess, speak on that is if I speak on things or talk about things is if I've experienced them. At least that's what I try to do. I don't try... I try not to just talk out my ass like I'm... Like I know what I'm talking about all the time because I don't. I don't at all. I just know what I've experienced and how my mind works. Oh, I should have. <laughs> That's weak old water. I forgot to replace it. Whatever. It's in a sealed camelback. So, it'll be fine. All I was saying it was just try to speak from experience instead of just talking about anything something that I don't have any clue about plus I haven't been opening I haven't been uploading a lot of videos so I wanted to take you guys along with me on this one document it my uh I've got a big pack of water in the back of this thing, or in my ruck, and I think there's a water bottle that's busted, so it's leaking back there, which sucks. I, I don't know why those people keep buzzing me in their golf cart. I guess they think I'm handsome. It's probably because I'm handsome. <laughs> so, oh, update on the garden. My garden's doing all right. We had a setback though, and I'm a bit upset about it. I'll talk about it after this go-kart stuff stops fucking zooming past me. So, I made some, I planted some cucumbers and some kale. Kale didn't come up. Radishes, corn, and some Napa cabbage. I was going to make some kimchi. Uh, I love kimchi. I've never made it before. And of course, I've never had the ingredients either or a garden so I wanted to tempt it so I worked on these cabbages for about a month growing them from seeds and then we transplanted them into the garden well I was doing good I had a good sized cabbage it was bigger than well both my fists put together you know all the way around it was doing good I was super proud of it I go down there in the morning to go check it eating Every single one of them. I had like, had like 10. It was a groundhog. That's why I hate groundhogs. But I love groundhog hunting. So, and I know which groundhog it is. We've had a pack of groundhogs that's been taking over my neighbor's house here before we moved in. And uh, I've been shooting them for him. 
with my 22. I got them all except one. There's one left. And uh, that groundhog's name is Limpy. Because I shot at him last year. I saw uh, he was, he had a, he was laying outside of his hole, sunning. And uh, this is when I had the old scope on the 22. I shot him and I heard it hit. And I went over there and I saw blood, small amount of blood, but he went down the hole. And I think I hit him in his back uh, left leg. So he's dragging that left leg and you can see it that he's dragging it. So his name's Limpy. Limpy the Groundhog. My little fat cheeseburger walrus. I'm gonna kill him. He ate my cabbages. But fair enough, I did kill his entire family. Now, He's the only one left. I almost got a shot on him yesterday, but he saw me. He's he's super spooked. He's really, really spooked. He saw me through windows and doors moving, and he took off, and I couldn't get a shot on him. But I will. Sooner or later, my cabbages will have their revenge. His unchecked aggression will not stand. So I've been dealing with that, but my cucumbers and stuff, my cucumber plants are huge. I've never seen ones that big. I've also got some watermelon growing. They're vining out real well. I just got to I don't have the best sun where my garden's at. But I'd like to trim some trees, but it's not really my property to trim trees on. So we're going to have to, I'm have to figure out something. I got to get more sun down there. Half of my, like the quarter of my garden, they're growing like the soil's great, but you can tell it doesn't get as much sun as it needs to because everything's stunted. You know, they got real stunted small, small plants compared to the rest of them that get food. But this is the first time I've ever done a garden in my entire life, so I'm learning. I'm learning. Next year, I'm going to do cabbages, but I might put them in a... I've got a little box down there, a little uh, grow box that I built with some glass to start like seedlings and stuff like that in for uh, so they can just get a good little start and then I could put them into the garden. I didn't know what I was doing so I was taking every precaution that I could. Oh yeah, we're past one mile. Just a heads up. Uh, so I might just work on that, have them grow in there for a little while. And uh, see how that works out. I don't know. If you guys have gardens, maybe you guys could give me some tips. I'd more than welcome hearing it. Man, last pack podcast. I don't know. I don't know what happened there. I only got eight views on it. I mean, it is over an hour. I guess people just can't sit down and watch it. I just don't have the ability to do live streams anymore uh, with my laptop going down. So, hey, my phone's old as shit. And I don't have a data plan for it. I just use Wi-Fi. So, that way, I don't have a cell phone bill. But... So I can't like take my cell phone and just do live recordings like all you guys do. So I have to just film it and then edit it and put it up for you guys to see. I am doing I am doing my little course that's in my development here, but it's an alright course for sure. 
So we've been doing, like I was saying earlier, we've been doing yoga. Man, that shit has been helping for reals. I used to have the mentality is <laughs> yoga's, yoga's for bitches. But uh, after I did it a little while, I realized it was pretty tough to get it right. And the benefits pretty fucking awesome. So we've been hitting it up. We do uh, it's this guy called Mike Fecht on YouTube. He's uh, it's called Yoga for Men. Uh, he was the NFL's yoga instructor. So, and he's this gigantic dude with tatted up sleeves and stuff. So he's a. Uh, I knew. I knew for sure that I was like if that big ass dude's doing yoga. He's like I could do it. I can do it for sure. So I tipped him. That's what we've been sticking with. He's got a couple free courses. We've just been going back from back and forth. Some are easier than others. Some are like 20 minutes, 25 minutes. Some are 55 minutes. I know they got a real hard one. Done that a couple times. It's good. I like to get up in the mornings. We usually hit it up around 10 o'clock in the morning. Jamie, he's got a family and all, so he's got a lot of responsibilities. A little more time constraint than just me and the girlfriend, Rook, the doggie. So, I understand. But he's been getting in shape as well. I think I got him. Uh, I think I got him starting on the keto diet. If only I could get him to stop drinking beer so much. Once he, once he stops drinking beer, <laughs> he's gonna do all right on keto. But I've been having a lot of talks about that. He's been wanting to get in shape. He's been wanting to go hunting. Apparently, his dad has a a big old farm that's just one other person's hunting on it and that's his cousin so he wants to he wants to come down hunt with me and then the next year go up and hunt with him I'm down for hunting anywhere it's just I know the one thing that's been frustrating me with my looking into elk hunting and and all kinds of shit like that is the lot this lottery like lottery and point system I don't even I think that's horseshit I don't I don't like the fact that you you put in money to maybe get a tag oh but you get points but you get but you get points for later nah, come on I don't know how much I believe that. I mean, it'll say I have points on something, I imagine, but I doubt it even comes into play when they're picking who gets what. I just don't like giving money to something and not receiving something in return. Like, that's not how currency works. <laughs> I, I don't do that. Like, I don't play lottery tickets. Like, that shit's stupid. I don't do scratch-offs. I mean, all that stuff's dumb. I don't go gamble. Like... I feel like if I if I pay to get an elk tag in somewhere, then I need to get an elk tag. Not, oh, we'll do a random drawing. Maybe you get one or maybe you don't. Well, bro, maybe you get my money, maybe you don't. But that, it's ridiculous. And especially since if I go elk hunting, it's all got to be out of state. My state, West Virginia, doesn't have elk. They're talking about moving them back in, and I think there might be a pack not a pack a herd I'm sorry it might be a, I think they started a herd I can't remember exactly where I think it's in southern West Virginia I gotta look it up I can't remember I remember looking it up but I glossed over it but 
that's definitely what I want to do. It's going to elk hunt. That's why I'm training. That's why I'm humping. All this crap. My cardio is improving. I'm super happy with it. When I was in the Army, the run was the hardest part. When I came out of basic, you have, with a PT test in the Army, you have two minutes to do push ups. And then you wait till everybody's done in the company for that. And then you have two minutes to do sit ups. And depending on your age, you have a minimum score you have to get, and a certain many reps get you a minimum score. A certain many reps give you a maximum a, a maximum score. I used to max push-ups and sit-ups, even at my fattest. Even when I was my fat, when I injured my back and I ballooned up the 238 pounds in Belgium. Don't get me wrong. That was me being a piece of shit. That was me drinking a lot of Belgian beer. There's 3,600 different types of beer in Belgium. And I was trying to drink every single one. <laughs> it was getting ridiculous. But, I used to max push-ups and sit-ups, but I'm now failing runs all the goddamn time. It's always failing runs. Just couldn't... I'm sorry, this, this, the third thing you have to do is a two-mile run. And if I remember correctly, when I got out, you had to run two miles. I think my last one was 16.36. I had to run two miles in 16.36. And I just, I'd hit that first mile, and they'd tell you when you're at your halfway point. They'd be like, oh, eight minutes. And I'd be like, okay, I'm doing all right. And then that second mile, I'd slow down so much. It was ridiculous. I just couldn't maintain it. Now... I'm getting to the point where I kind of look forward to runs, which is weird for me to say, because I hate running. There goes the squirrel. I hate, I always hate running. Even when I was, let's see, basic training when I came out, when I graduated, did, I ran, I did, let's see, 89 push-ups, 98 sit-ups, and then I ran, then you have a two-minute or sorry, a 10 minute wait, and then you go run a two, your two miles. Um, so I went, ran the, the two miles, and uh, 13.59, I was super surprised. That was one of my goals in basic training, was to run a two mile under 14 minutes. Because I remember, my, <laughs> my first two mile, I was 199 pounds when I went into basic. At 19 years old and my first two miles that I ever ran it was like I think I came in at like 23 minutes I was not used to running long distance I could always sprint I could always sprint pretty well but running long distances nah I couldn't do it it was terrible so by the end of it by the end of the 18 weeks I ran 1359 two miles super excited about that but now I don't think I could I don't know if I could pass it if I could get back down to that standard of 1636 I haven't timed it in a long time and I think the reason why I haven't timed it is because I don't want to feel I'm tired of feeling pressure and uh Tired of feeling pressure to do things, as in like, like when I get out and run and I do cardio, I push myself. I definitely push myself. There's parts of the hills that I go up and stuff like that where it's like, I'm I'm actually picking up the pace instead of slowing down, stuff like that. Like I can physically see that I'm improving, but. There's something that happens when you just hit that time, that stopwatch, you know? You feel so much pressure, you don't enjoy any of it. I don't, I wouldn't enjoy doing that run. 
at all. And I think that hinders you. I, I feel like it hinders me, at least. Which... Which I'm not about. Right now, I'm just trying to... Yeah, PT's hard. This shit's fucking hard. Don't get me wrong. My back's starting to hurt. This, my, uh... The balls in my feet are got hot spots on them. You know? But... But I keep going. It's just... Self-discipline. I get... I got goals in my head, and I... Stick to them, I guess. I don't know. So, I don't know how many of you guys are actually going to get to this point. We'll see. Not a lot of you have been watching my podcast. I get it. It's cool. But uh, on the 28th, uh, been talking to that murder ink. He wants to come down and hang out and do a podcast with me. So I told him he's welcome. Oh, we just finished two miles, by the way. Hold on, I got to start rocking. I didn't think you guys wanted to see that. But he's talking about coming down on the 28th doing a podcast. Uh, I think that's going to be awesome. I don't have many... Where I'm living at, I don't have many friends to hang out with. I mean, we've got all the girlfriends, friends, and stuff like that, but they're just not, I'm not as close to them as I, I would be with, uh, my dog's gonna attack me. I don't think you can see him. Uh, I don't have many friends here, so I keep my busy, myself busy with gardening, practicing my bow, doing PT, I gotta watch that puppy, and then ever so often, playing some video games, but, all my army buddies are, I think my closest army buddy right now, is, uh, Timmy the Tooth, who you guys saw in Ordinary Tales of Bravery, but he's still two hours and ten minutes away, you know? Sucks not having, like, really sucks getting out of the army and then not having these people that you spent every day of your life with for years not around you anymore. Like, and then even with civilian friends, man, they, they got feelings and stuff, you know? Always got, <laughs> I mean that jokingly, but, but, well, a little bit of truth in there. They just... I don't know how to explain it. You can't... Listen, like... In the barracks, man, we never locked our doors. It doesn't matter if you were in there... Beating your dick. They just walk in, and they'll have a conversation with you. You just put your dick away. Or tell them to get out until I finish, and then come back in five minutes. But... You can't do that with civilian friends. I'm just kidding. But it's just... Everybody's like, oh man, you can't just show up in my house. You know, nobody's... Nobody gets... I don't know, civilian friends aren't as welcoming, I guess. They're not as welcoming. Don't get me wrong. I'm not talking shit about my civilian friends. There's just a difference. My civilian friends have always been super cordial to me. They're always quick to give me a... A shot or a beer or smoke and I I never ask I never have to ask and uh, they always invite me to parties we always have a good time it's just I don't know I just don't have that you're just not as close to them as uh, as I'm used to I guess and that's a hard that's a hard thing for me to adjust to. You know, so I talk to my buddy Jameson every day. And we talk about everything. 
And I try to talk to Timmy when I can, but he's going through a rough time. <sighs> Pack's getting heavy. We're past two miles. It's when it starts wearing on you. It's definitely when it starts wearing on you. But anyways, we're supposed to we're supposed to uh, go to a party tonight. Uh, I'll probably go to that. I haven't been down to this person's house in a little while. I'm on the hill. I don't know if you guys can having a super focus. Hold on, I'm almost up there. It's a heavy, it's a harsh hill. It's a harsh hill. It's not as long as that other loop, but it's a bit steeper. And everything's hard when you got 60 pounds on your back. But anyways, yeah, what I was saying is, hopefully I can get my buddy Jameson. To lay off all the beers he's been doing. Just cut it back a little bit. That's all. You can get on this keto diet. Keto diet, absolutely amazing. Plus, it lets me eat like a complete savage. It's nothing but, it's all low carb, low sugar, high fat. Uh, and pro not high protein. You gotta, gotta gotta watch being on protein and kick you out of ketosis. But but I don't I don't count calories. I'm not really worried about that. The only thing you gotta watch out is you need to stay under 50 carbs a day. And you gotta stay under 50 grams of carbs a day. And you gotta stay underneath 20 grams of sugar. Which the sugar part's easy. I don't eat much sugar. Don't get me wrong. I do have a sweet tooth. <laughs> I love me some Snickers. But, uh, the, the sugar part's pretty easy. Uh, carbs. Carbs, I little, I up my carb intake a little bit past the 30 when I have, uh, when I'm doing one, rock marching. And if I'm doing like super high intensity cardio. Which is Fridays. I just feel like it a better workout when I have a little bit more carbs in me than I'm used to. Other than that, the keto diet has helped, man. I went from 238 pounds I'm at 185 now and uh, I'd like to drop a little bit more but if I decide to drop a little bit more I think I'm gonna have to start getting into weightlifting again but I know I still feel strong I feel real strong and I know that's not the part that I needed help with. My cardio sucked. Smoking all those years, not taking care of myself. Not taking care of myself, drinking too much. All that stupid shit. And that's why my cardio was lacking. Now, I feel pretty good where I'm at. I know do these ruck marches sometimes and uh, I don't hardly ever feel it in my lungs anymore I used to if I walked up that hill oh six months ago <gasps> I'd have been a mouth breather sucking air bad I know I would have because I'd done it it was terrible now I don't hardly even on the hard parts I don't hardly ever get out of out of breath it's just working my muscles and my legs 
And you can work your muscles and your legs every freaking day. Every freaking day. But once a week, I put this 60 pounds on, on hump day, and do some humping. Not the good kind of humping. But I figured I would just take you guys along because I haven't uploaded a video in a long time. But like I was saying, yeah, Murder Inc. supposed to come down and uh, visit. We'll see if that works out. I hope it does. I'm looking forward to meeting to him, meeting him in person and having some good long discussions. Hopefully we can. Maybe we'll get some beers. Some type of low carb beer. <laughs> like Mick Ultra or something. Or maybe I'll just make some cocktails. Cocktails are keto friendly. Vodka. A little bit of seltzer water and then some Mio's. Pretty good. Every time I take a drink of water, I always think about if uh, if I drink water out of my camelback, it's on the top of my my rucksack. I don't have the dog with me this time. All gonna get attacked. If I have the... If I drink that water, does my pack get lighter? Or does it just even out? Because it's adding weight in my belly. I don't know. I don't know. My dog, I could hear Rook across here. That's her. She's barking at those dogs. They're barking at me. She's such a good girl. I don't know if she can see me through the through the trees or not. We're almost done. We're at, let's see. That got's pretty good. Uh, that's a pretty good time, I think. Maybe. I'm not walking very fast. I'm just doing it. Like I said, I'm not trying to put time limits and time constraints on me because it's just, it's just pressure I don't need. Makes me stop enjoying working out. Makes it seem more like a chore. And I just want it to be positive. So that way I keep doing it. Nobody likes doing shit that they hate. I've just got to get around this little turn around here. And then we're done. Regardless, I'm glad you guys came along with me, if you made it this far. <laughs> I just figured, hell, I'll, I'll do a pretty cool intro, and then I'll just take you along. Plus, I got to get used to holding this tripod and my camera here and then doing this, because this is how I'm gonna film it when I do, when I go hunting. I'm gonna film the exact same way. And if I'm, and if I'm in the back country, and I'm trying to cover distance, this is what I'm gonna have to do all the time. So I just wanted to see, it's my first try out to see what it's like to actually hump some weight and then carry my tripod and talk to camera. Plus, I'm not good at talking to cameras. I feel real weird. I mean, to you, I'm talking to you. But what I'm doing right now is just recording myself talking aloud. I think it's super weird that I'm walking through the development just talking out loud. It, it bothers me. 
and I'm not good at it. So I tend to just think of stuff that comes up in my head and uh, put it out there. Here we go, making the turn. Once I knock out this last 50 yards, it's over with. Again, thank you guys for coming and watching the video, hanging out. I appreciate it. Probably the fastest three miles I've ever done because I'm too busy talking to you guys. <laughs> Alrighty, guys. I'm going to get this heavy thing off my back and I'll see you. I'll see you next time. I'm Cook and this is Cook Goes Hunting. Later, guys.